Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of Standing TV Magazine. My name is Mason. I will be your host today. Our topics for today are Brut, Planet Earth, Justin from Hotel de Botel, and the Kameraad Project. First up, we will talk about Brut events. These are urban hip hop parties uh, organized in the north of the Netherlands. Are you ready for a party? Well, let's go! That was the event, a good party, that's for sure. In the studio now, we have one of the organizers of these events, Jesse Dolfsma. Welcome, Jesse. Thank Hi. you for being here. Um, to start off, what are you actually doing for Brut? Um, well, our uh, team consists of uh, five people, and I am one of the promo leaders. So um, we host events not only uh, in the northern of the Netherlands, but through the whole uh, country. Okay. Um, my job is to make sure that everyone does their job to reach our final goal. Um, so it's, um, I give them uh, tasks like posting stuff on social media, like Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Snapchat. Um, I also write the content for our Facebook page. Um, I write the content for different parties. Um, I do the VIP reservations. Um, and throughout, I get to learn step by step. I get to learn even more. So that's that's what I do. Okay, thank you. Uh, and Jesse, <coughs> I'm curious. What's the reason you started working at Brut? Is there any specific reason? Um, well, last year I graduated my studies events and organization. So that's why I'm interested in working in the event sector. Um, it's an industry that constantly changes. You got a lot of um, challenges and opportunities. Um, Brit is an organization with a lot of young people, uh, a lot of creative people, and it's not like we're just colleagues, we're all friends. Um, cool. And that's what makes it really nice. The atmosphere is just really, really nice. Cool, yeah. cool. And yeah, th that differs maybe from other events or event organization, but what's the, yeah, the specific uh, difference between Brut and an other and other events organization? What I think that um, the biggest difference is that Brut um, it's the whole atmosphere that we create. We make the party with the people who are there. Um, and we also engage our DJs and other artists. It's not like we just book them, um, but it's, it's all friendship. Um, most of the times the DJs, uh, the artists come earlier in the afternoon. Um, we have dinner together. Um, and it's, it's like one big family. So okay. I think, I think that's the, the biggest difference. Okay, do you have a final goal for Brut events, like going up road or anything like that? What do you want to reach with Brut at the end? Um, well, we would like to have our own uh, Brut festival. That would be really cool. So we're looking at opportunities to do that. Um, and um, well, we've been abroad once. We've been to uh, Jorat de Mar in Spain. Okay. Um, and basically what we want to reach is just um, like we're becoming a brand. Um, it's becoming a lifestyle, a uh, fashion. Um, and what we want to reach is just being naturally known. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, we're already running out of questions, but uh, thank you for being here, okay. Jesse. And uh, yeah, we hope uh, there will be a lot more Brut events in the future, of course. 
All right, let's move on. Today we have an interview with Michael J. Sanderson. He had worked on a documentary of planet Earth. Really cool, but first we experienced how it is to be him. Hello everybody, today we're at the zoo and we're gonna show you how hard it is to be a cameraman of animals. Let's go! One eternity later. A few moments later. Twelve seconds later. That was a long day. I want to go home. Now you really know how difficult it is to be a cameraman of animals. Back to the studio. I doubt that these camera struggles are also Michael's struggles. Let's ask it himself. We got a Skype connection with the Dutch cameraman of planet Earth, Michael J. Sanderson. It might be that the connection won't work that well because he is on the other side of the world, but we will do our best. Michael, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Are Thank you, you there? Do we have a connection in the studio as well? All right, we're waiting, we're waiting. Yeah, Michael, okay, can you hear us? I can hear you very well. Okay, uh, we can hear you now as well. Um, I have a couple of questions for you to start off. Um, how did you become a cameraman? Um, how I became a cameraman? Well, that's quite a long story, but basically I became a cameraman because I wanted to become one. And so I did everything I could to try and get into the business, try and get the job. And it was actually through do after my studies, I studied a, a bachelor degree and a, a master in the UK. And then I sent out about 100 CVs to try and get a job as a camera assistant. And then within six months, I was already filming as a cameraman, and since then I, I never looked back, basically. Okay, okay, thank you for your clear answer. And why did you decide to become a wildlife cameraman? Well, it was because of this, this time when I was, um, I was 19 at the time, I was already using cameras a lot. I was uh, filming with my, my little cameras, uh, many little clips of things, and then I decided, I went to Madagascar on a, a volunteer uh, uh, expedition. 
And uh, during that trip, I had like a day off from the, the actual work. And I started chasing lemurs, like these little monkeys that live in, uh, in Madagascar with my camera. And I, that experience was, uh, was pretty, pretty amazing because I came face to face with, with this lemur. And um, basically, I, I got this money shot of these beautiful eyes of this lemur. And because of that, I sort of realized that this is an amazing uh, situation because I'm in the middle of nowhere in Madagascar. And, and I was on my own, and I got this amazing shot. And after that, I never looked back. I only really wanted to film nature after that. So yeah, that's cool. the time. Cool, and as we saw in the item, like uh, filming wildlife isn't always that easy. Can you tell us something about what the hardest thing is of filming wildlife? I think the hard, one of the hardest things is actually, actually filming a behavior that is special, that is different and filming it from enough different angles to, to, to tell a story because often an animal lands or, or arrives and then they disappear and then you've got to try and make a story of, of a little behavior that happens. So it's just, you have to position yourself in the right place at the right time on multiple times to get enough images to tell a story. If the animal does it once and that's it, you know, it's going to be very hard to do. I think. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. That's an, another clear answer again. And uh, can you tell us something about how, how long it takes to film an episode of Planet Earth, for example? Well, it took, it, it took, in this case, it took more than two years, I think. Uh, wow. Multiple crews uh, on, on, the, on the different episodes. There were six episodes. Each episode had probably about 10 cameramen involved. And uh, yeah, it, it takes a long time. So, and it, it's not possible for one person to do. You, uh, you have multiple uh, cameramen. In, this, in the Jungles episode, which I worked, it was about, I think, 10 different names that worked on it, that actually delivered. Okay, Michael, well, we're running out of time. I, I, have, I have more questions for you, but unfortunately we can't move no on problem. because, yeah, okay. But I want to thank you a lot for answering all of our questions. And no uh, of course, we hope to see many of your camera skills in the future. Good luck to you and maybe see you next time. Thank you, you too. Thank you. In our next item, we'll be watching the singer from the band Hotel de Botel and the band Tot and Met. He will tell us the story behind the song and the bands. Afterwards, he will join us live in the studio to play one of their songs and to answer a few questions. I'm the singer-songwriter of the band called Hotel de Botel. Our first song is called Huisbaas, or in English, Landlord. It's a song about my big fat cat that I have at home. And that's about it. Uh, as I said, the main source of inspiration for this song was my big cat that I have at home. Um, I was trying to do something different. I was making music for so long now I decided to make children's songs and the first time we ever talked about that my cat walked in the room and it was like magic happened at that moment we started making a song immediately. The story of the song uh, Landlord is about uh, actually it's a, a whole day with my cat waking up with him wanting food uh, going to bed with him, wanting food, and all the other moments in the day where he wants food. Uh, the process of this song was actually, my friend started playing bass, I started singing, uh, then we had the concept of the song clear, then I always go here because it's really quiet and before the restaurant opens they let me ride here. So. I have all the people outside, stray cats walking outside. Uh, every time when I like to channel myself into a certain stream of inspiration, I go here. Uh, with things that I see, things that I hear, things that 
occur in my life and all the bad relationships I've been in. But with this children's song theme, it's different. I like to ask children what they want to hear songs about. Uh, ask my little nephews and nieces, and they always yell, your cat, your cat is so awesome. So that was quite simple for me, actually. To all the students of Stanton, if you ever want to make music, just follow your inner child, because it always has something to say. You just have to be willing to listen. We welcome Justin Westerij in the studio today from the band Hotel de Botel. He will perform his song Huisbaas or Landlord Translated live. Give it up for Justin and his band. Thank you for being here, Justin. If you want to sit over here, that would be awesome. For you, I have also a couple of questions. Um, to start off, when did you start with the band? With this band, we started off like three months ago. Okay. Uh, That's two, quite short ago. The two boys I play music with, like for ages now, it seems ages, <laughs> but this, for these songs for kids, we just started. Okay, cool. And uh, another question, how did you start with singing songs and writing your own music? Um, I think like when we were very little and Santa Claus came to town, <laughs> we all have to write poetry for each other, for the, for the surprises and the, and the gifts. And my brother was like six years older than me. He, when I 
could start it to uh, being able to write, he asked me if I could write his poems for him. Yeah. So I, I can't remember not writing. Okay, okay, and um, yeah, we, we saw you singing over there. Are you playing any instruments as well? No, no, I'm just learning a little, little bit of bass guitar uh, by Remco. He teaches me a little, little bit of things, but he's so good that it doesn't motivate me to play. All right, the, the band uh, which you were playing right now, was it Totemet or...? No, that's uh, uh, right now we just started, so we just don't have a real ah, solid band name okay. yet, but Hotel the Bottle sounds awesome. Hotel the Bottle, okay, uh, imagine Hotel the Bottle. Can, can Hotel the Bottle be a future for you? Can you make yeah, like a living um, out of it? I hope so. Yeah, of course. It would be awesome. Uh, we, we've just uh, let it uh, hear, hear to a few children that right now, and they're all very enthusiastic. Yeah. So if all the children could be this, this happy to hear it, it would be uh, like the best future ever. Cool. And do you have any special feelings when you're singing a, yeah, a song for children? Yeah, and of course. That yeah. they like it? What's your feeling about that? Uh, if you're able to make children happy in these harsh times and, and also being able to learn them something good and make them feel good about themselves, what better feeling is there? No better feeling in the world. Okay, cool. And then I have a last question for you to, to round it all off. Is there anything else you would like to tell to the, to the people who are watching who maybe want to perform in the music industry later on? Do you have any tips or tops? Uh, just like in the, in the interview item, just follow your heart. There's, there's Follow your heart, yeah, always, your inner child. There's always something to, to listen to, yeah. Cool, um, all right. Okay, now, well, thank you for being here, Justin. And uh, yeah, we're moving on. Thank you. Thank Forget you. what you did yesterday or even two hours ago. If you suffer dementia, then you can't remember these little things. But then Project Kameraad comes to help. Project Kameraad makes sure that the elderly get the attention they need and all done by students. But do the students of Stenda know about this project? We'll find it out. Hello and welcome. Today we are at Stenden University where they have a special project. This project is called Kameraad and in this project are students helping people with dementia. Let's see how many students know about this project. Let's go! So, do you guys know what dementia is? Dementia? Dementia. You know, old people who are... Oh, you know it. <laughs> yeah, you They're know not, it. not a good memory oh, and... Yes, my, uh, my grandma has uh, is dementia. Okay. Has dementia. Yes. Uh, my grandma doesn't have dementia, but I know what it is. Okay. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. I know what it is. Yes? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do you know that Stenden has a project team called Kamerad who volunteers to spend time with patients to give them a good time? No, I didn't know that. No. Yes, yes. Uh, I, uh, I'm, uh, English. I'm part of it, yes, yes. Uh. No, I didn't. There's no information about that given. No, never heard about it. Okay, and what do you think of the fact that they spend time with patience to give them a good time as walking in the park and stuff. Well, I think it's great because people with dementia also need to feel integrated and loved by others. So it's a really nice and kind-hearted project. Well, it's a very nice thing to do and I would definitely like to hear more about it. I think volunteer work is always uh, good and um, especially when it comes to elderly people, I think it's necessary. So I think it's a good thing. Well, it's quite interesting, but, um, yeah, what do I think? Um, I'm just wondering how much effect it has on the people with dementia. If you could volunteer, would you do such things or not? I guess if it doesn't, uh, yeah, cut my time for studying, then I would, yeah. Yeah, I would love to do it because, of course, I want to uh, support uh, these people and I know that um, they're just the same as everyone else and it would be amazing to contribute to this very thoughtful charity. Yes, I would definitely do it because I think it's, it's a good thing to help out different people or other people than yourself. So, what do you think of that? I think good because you're a part of it? Yes, yes. Um, now I would say yes, because I think it's uh, wonderful 
if you can mean something to those people, but in reality I wouldn't. What we can say is that not so many students know about this project, but everybody is well aware about what dementia is, and they think that it's a good initiative from Kamerad to do this. Because everybody deserves some happiness in their life. Back to the studio. As we saw in the item, not many stu uh, students know about this project. We're moving to our guest, Jenny, who is working with elderly who suffer dementia. Thank you for coming. You're um, welcome. Yeah, uh, to start off, I have a question for you and I think for all the people that's necessary to know. Can you explain what dementia exactly is? And dementia is um, information that blocks from the brain. Uh, they don't know what you say. They don't know what they do two hours ago. Okay. They don't know. Absolutely no idea. No idea. Okay, and um, dementia, is that like a disease or an illness only for elder people or do young people also suffer from it? Uh, young people suffer from it too. Uh, people like about uh, 56. 56, they, yeah? Yes, they, uh, they suffer from dementia too. It's, it's, uh, it's in the ages okay. they and, grow. And how, how is it possible that, that, that like one person can get it? When like really old and one person is a little bit younger, how is that even possible? Uh, it's it's in the brain um, when they are born. Okay. It's not that they go on and it, it comes. No, it's, it's all already in, there. It's already there. Okay. And um, yeah, suffering from dementia, I think it, it it won't start directly with forgetting all the stuff directly, but. How does it start? Is it like a process or stages? Yes, it is a project and stages. Um, it, it, it begins with small things. They don't know what they eat for breakfast or who called. Yeah. They don't know anymore. And later on in the facts, they go, um, they don't know anymore what they do a week ago. Or, and they go back to the past yeah. and told and go, um, yeah, tell stories about the past in, instead of what they do now. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. And um, okay, to round that off a little bit, what do you think about Project Kamerad, which we saw in the item? It's a wonderful, uh, a wonderful idea. Um, a lot of uh, people like me, they, do ha they don't have uh, time to uh, go for a talk or to go for um, a walk with yeah. people and students can't and can help the people um, from the with dementia um, talk and go for a walk. Okay, and do you think that it, it might work better if that students uh, are spending time together with elderly people suffering from dementia instead of people who are actually working for it? Yes, yes, it, it, it makes them happier. They have uh, more social context uh, around them. In, in fact, uh, only the people who work with the yeah. elderly people. So they are meeting new people. New that's people. That's why yes. Project Comrades also yeah, yes. started. And um, yeah, Jesse, do you think there will be a, a cure for dementia in the future? I hope. Someday. I hope. And it what it kind of cure could it be? I hope it slows a little bit down. And not, it, not that it helps, but slow it down. So the older people can uh, live uh, yeah, live with it. Okay, and do you have any tips for students who are watching right now what to do with someone who is suffering from dementia or maybe what, yeah, who would like to help, what they can do? Uh, what they can do, they can uh, go to the elderly people and they uh, go for a talk, a walk, and yeah, they were so much happier and little things, help them with, with calling somebody. Um, and don't be afraid the, uh, that they say, for, hey, I know you. And you have no see that woman or man in your whole life. They can say that to okay. you, for, hey, I know you. But it can be, the, she don't know if you saw him. Or. Okay, okay, well, thank you, Jenny. We're already done with the questions. And uh, thank, you us for, thank you for giving us the information as well. And You're if welcome. you want to help the elderly, make sure to contact Kamerad and give the elderly a great feeling. This was our show for today. Thank you all for watching Stan and TV magazine and we hope to see you next time. Tune in. Bye bye.